Hello, friend. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. This is Pastor Pitts Evans. On this podcast, we read and discuss one chapter of God's Word per episode. Let's go now to the Bible and see what the Lord has for us today. Colossians chapter 4. Masters, provide your slaves with what is right and fair, because you know that you also have a master in heaven. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. And pray for us, too, that God may open a door for our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly as I should. Be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Tychicus will tell you all the news about me. He's a dear brother, a faithful minister, and fellow servant in the Lord. I am sending him to you for the express purpose that you may know about our circumstances and that he may encourage your hearts. He is coming with Onesimus, our faithful and dear brother, who is one of you. They will tell you everything that is happening here. My fellow prisoner, Aristarchus, sends you his greetings, as does Mark, the cousin of Barnabas. You have received instructions about him. If he comes to you, welcome him. Jesus, who is called Justice, also sends greetings. These are the only Jews among my fellow workers for the kingdom of God, and they have proved a comfort to me. A papyrus who is one of you and a servant of Christ Jesus, sends greetings. He is always wrestling in prayer for you, that you may stand firm in all of the will of God, mature and fully assured. I vouch for him that he is working hard for you and for those at Laodicea and Hierapolis. Our dear friend Luke, the doctor, and Demas send their greetings. Give my greetings to the brothers at Laodicea, and to Nymphia and the church in her house. After this letter has been read to you, see that it is also read in the church of the Laodiceans, and that you in turn read the letter from Laodicea. Tell Archippus, see to it that you complete the work you have received in the Lord. I, Paul, write this greeting in my own hand. Remember my chains. Grace be with you. It's interesting to me that the great men of God in the Bible and the great women of God in the Bible sometimes seem to us as superhuman. In other words, they weren't subject to the same likes and dislikes that we are. It seems like they are just super saints. They were always successful. They were so holy and far above whatever we can attain to that we wouldn't be able to relate to them. But that's not the truth, obviously. Paul was a man just like I'm a man. Uh, He was a human just like you and I are humans. And Paul asked often in his letters that people would pray for him. In verse 3, he says, pray for us too, that God may open a door for our message. So Paul was not opposed to uh, soliciting prayer from others that he asked to be prayed for. Sometimes I know people are Um, reluctant to ask others to pray for them. But this is a biblical pattern. And friends, if the great apostle Paul needed to solicit prayer from other believers, how much more do you and I need to solicit prayers from other believers? In fact, I, I ask you now, please pray for me. Pray that I'll preach right things that are pleasing to the Lord. Pray for an anointing to touch the lives of believers and unbelievers alike. And so pray that the Lord would use these messages and these words and these scriptures to touch the lives of people. Pray for me that I would be faithful to the Lord, that there would be a continual open door for the message that I preach, and that I would be able to proclaim the mystery of Christ, just like Paul did. Paul asked, pray that I may proclaim the message of the mystery of Christ clearly as I should. And I pray the same thing. I ask the same thing. Pray that I would be able to reveal Christ clearly as I should. Verse 5, Paul writes, Be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Now, when he says outsiders, he's talking about people outside of the faith. Verse 6, Let your conversation always be full of grace, seasoned with salt, and 
so that you may know how to answer everyone. Now, this idea of being on display to unbelievers, to so-called outsiders, is consistent in the New Testament. We're to be in the world and not of the world. We don't withdraw from everyone who doesn't know Christ. We're to be among them in both our work and in our daily lives and to be aware that outsiders are observing us. And we need to be ready to give an answer for our faith. We need to know how to answer everyone who asks or who inquires about why we're different. And we should be different. Now, this letter, Paul names a number of his companions. Remember, he's in Rome under house arrest, and apparently these various people were visiting him in Rome. He was there for at least two years under house arrest, so there was plenty of time for word to get around to his various churches that he'd been incarcerated. He mentions in verse 7 that Tychicus was there and that he would be coming to Colossae to tell them all the news about him. And of Tychicus, Paul writes, he's a dear brother a faithful minister, and a fellow servant in the Lord. So what a commendation from Paul the Apostle. This Tychicus must have been quite a brother. He was Paul's co-laborer. In verse 8, Paul writes, I'm sending Tychicus to you for the express purpose that you may know about our circumstances and that he may encourage your hearts. And so Tychicus was coming as Paul's human epistle to the church at Colossae. He writes in verse 9, he's coming with Onesimus, our faithful and dear brother, who is one of you. Now, I want to just pause for a second. You may have heard this name Onesimus before. He is the man that is written about in the book of Philemon, also one of Paul's letters. Apparently, Onesimus was a runaway slave. And Onesimus was a Christian. He ended up in Rome serving Paul. He was from the city of Colossae, as was his master, Philemon. But yet, both were brothers in Christ and faithful brothers of Paul. And ultimately, uh, Paul wrote Philemon and said, please forgive Onesimus for being a runaway slave. And apparently, Paul instructed Onesimus to return to Philemon. But Paul also reminded Philemon that he should show mercy to Onesimus as his brother in the Lord, uh, just as Philemon would need mercy from the Lord that the Lord had no favoritism between slave and master. They both are conditions that only exist on this side of the grave. And so Paul, um, writing in the book of Colossians chapter 4, he says, He's coming. He's our faithful and dear brother who is one of you. And uh, he, Antichicus, will tell you everything that's happening here. He goes on to mention his fellow prisoner, Aristarchus. This Aristarchus is mentioned in several of Paul's letters. Apparently, he's incarcerated with Paul. He says he's a fellow prisoner. He sends his greetings, as does Mark, the cousin of Barnabas. Now, this is very important information. Mark is the same John Mark, the writer of the Gospel of Mark. You may recall that John Mark accompanied Paul and Barnabas on one of their missionary journeys, and then he abandoned them in mid-stroke. At a later, the start of a later missionary journey, Paul wanted to omit Mark from their team, but Barnabas wanted to take Mark on the team. And so Paul and Barnabas split over the question of should John Mark be part of the team? And Barnabas went one way with Mark, and Paul went the other way with Silas. But we now learn that Mark was the cousin of Barnabas. So hence, Mark was not only someone who was mentioned prominently in the early church, he's mentioned in Acts, not only is he a gospel writer, not only does he attend to Paul on his missionary journeys. Here, Paul, late in his life, is mentioning that Mark has been visiting him in Rome, and um, he's there sending his greetings to the uh, readers at the Colossian church. In verse 11, Paul writes of a man called Jesus, who is also known as Justice. This man sends his greetings, and he says the above. Uh, John Mark, Onesimus, Aristarchus, uh, Jesus called Justice, are Jews. And these Jews, these Jewish believers, have been there with Paul in Rome. Verse 12, he writes about Epaphras, uh, who is one of you. As I mentioned um, early in the first chapter of Colossians, Epaphras is probably the one that started the church in Colossia. Not Paul, but Epaphras. 
And uh, at this point, he's visiting Paul in, in Rome, and he probably was the one to carry back this letter to the Colossian church. He's a servant of Christ. He sends his greetings here. Paul says he's always wrestling in prayer for the Colossian church, that they may stand firm in all the will of God, mature and fully assured. And he says, I vouch for him that he's working hard for you and for those at Laodicea and Heropolis. So these were two more of the early churches. And then in verse 14, Paul mentions his dear friend, Luke, the doctor. Now, you may have heard that the writer of the Gospel of Luke was a Gentile and a physician. Remember that Paul had already said in this chapter that Tychicus, Onesimus, Aristarchus, and Mark, and Jesus called Justice were the only Jews among his co-workers there. And here he says, but Luke is here too, indicating that Luke was not a Jew. So Luke is probably the only Gentile writer in the New Testament, based in part because of this fourth chapter of Colossians, the exclusion from the group of Jews, as Paul has delineated um, previously in this chapter. And the fact that Luke was a doctor uh, is contained in verse 14. Luke, the doctor, or the beloved physician, as some have referred to him. So the fact that he's a Gentile, the fact that he's a physician is contained in this chapter. And then Demas is mentioned also. Demas apparently is in good standing relationally with Paul at this point. But later in in chapter 4, verse 10 of 2 Timothy, Paul writes that Demas had forsaken him. So at some point, Demas abandoned the faith and, and backslid. But all in all, this is a very important letter for the theological content and the mention of these very important first century figures. Lord, we thank you for Paul and this letter that he wrote to the Colossian church and to us in our day. Lord, we pray that we would be faithful like many of Paul's companions. Lord, that we would walk worthy according to the calling that we have in Christ Jesus, and that each of us would know how to give an answer to anyone who asks why it is that we serve the risen Lord Jesus. Lord, we love you and we thank you. Amen and amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.